Hey, welcome to episode three of Extensive Testing. Today, we're gonna to talk about the type of 3D printer style we're gonna need for 3D printing a house, super size. To start off, now that we have all of our parts, we have the controller, the micro step drivers, the giant steppers and their power. We have the feeder screw that's gonna pump the concrete through the hose we have brackets, bearings, we have giant belts to run as big as the house is going to be so we can control everything like the print head um, from far away. Say like the printer head has to travel 50 feet to go across the house if we're printing a 50 foot house. This is going to be enough belt to go that distance on the beam. So talking about beams, this is actually the beam I'm talking about. It's uh, that top bar. And this is actually the same style that we're going to use to print a house because of its, its uh, practicality. Much like a sawmill, it uses these tracks on the ground or it can use tracks on the ground which is which is which is great because having the tracks on the ground as many as you know two two or as many as you could <laughs> it makes it it makes it rigid it makes it simple you can move it you can measure it it's it's pretty simple rather than buying in a really expensive robot it's just practical and it never fails it always works having a having some simple tracks where the dust can can fall off of and you can constantly be relying on it so the tracks on the ground is the style we're using we could use you know we could use other designs like a like a delta design where the arms are in uh, suspended the print head is uh, in the center and you know um, make a giant one of these to print the house but that's not practical like you you'd have you'd have to have it would be, have to be so big so and it would always be the same size so we're not gonna we're not gonna do that kind we're not gonna use a robotic arm style because first of all to get one that's that big it would be heavy extremely expensive and I don't know very impractical I wouldn't even want to get it dirty so the beam is what we're gonna be uh, uh, we're gonna be using two different types of beams two sizes when we when we build this we're gonna build it just pretty much the same way but with a small beam to test it because I'm not gonna set up a 3d printed uh, 3d print machine that's taking up my whole property we're gonna set one up that's about maybe five to ten feet so once we get it going and working we get the pumps working we we could just put a new beam in here I've got enough belt where we could put like a 50 foot beam in here we print a 50 foot wide house if we wanted to at that point take it back apart maybe print a smaller one next but the tracks will always be the same the belts will go inside the track, so the motors will be at the end, turning, pulling, 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 and then it will pull the whole, the whole print, the whole print beam, the whole leg, both legs at the same time. Two motors will be synchronously connected, wire through the wires, and it will obviously move at the same speed, so it'll be moving evenly. A lot like this 3D print or laser printer, laser burner. You got you got a, a rod in the middle, one motor, and it controls both tracks with a synchronous timing belt. So a lot like this, you know, this not a far stress from what we're doing is from a laser engraver, honestly. If you wanted to say it, we could replicate this 3D uh, 2D, I mean engraver style and make it supersized but use a 3d printer 
style head. So basically that's the design mixed, mixed with a 3D printer. And there is printers that use the same design. But for us, we're making this, this style. It's the most practical and that's just how it is. So we're gonna make a parts list next. That's the, that's the step three, episode three, step three. So we will make a six to 10 foot beam. The legs will be about six to 10 foot tall. So whatever we make could maybe be square, like an, like enough clearance, enough width, enough depth to make maybe a concrete igloo or a shed, a dog house, a small, a small castle. If you have researched 3D printed houses, you may have seen the guy that printed one of these castles about the size of my garage out of concrete. And comment below if you notice any similarities of what we're doing. If you, if you look really carefully and pause some of the frames, you'll see just some similarities. Very quick and very hard to tell, to tell, but have fun with that video, and then come back and 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 then talk about it because I think you'll see something that you want to say, something you want to comment, maybe. <laughs> so we'll see. Well, that about it. That about it, uh, wraps up episode three. So we we have the electronics. They're they're functioning. Uh, we have the parts for the motors, the bracketry, the belts, for the arms, the legs, the head, and next step is to make the parts list and order the metal. So that's probably going to be step four, episode four. Uh, stay tuned, like, subscribe if you want to. It's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. And, uh, like I said before, I wasn't even going to, I wasn't even going to make these videos. I was going to probably just do this without telling anybody. So as you can tell, I've got, I've got about a couple years in, into it. I've been planning this for two years. So I've literally have it all planned, mostly planned. I mean, figured out, I've got all the things figured out, all the, the C++ programming through Marlin. You know, in Arduino, in the Arduino hub, pretty much everything's planned and figured out. So now that this is rolling, feel free to subscribe and and watch because I'm actually gonna just keep it keep it rolling. But every 48 hours, I'm gonna be putting up a new one because it's kind of exciting. So now I can actually just go through step by step all at once and not even wait for parts. So. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.